Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about hybridoma technology, which is a technology for generating monoclonal antibodies. Now let us look at what are monoclonal antibodies. Simply, they are antibodies which can determine single epitope on an antigen. Now, what are epitopes? Epitopes are antigenic determinants. So, if an antibody recognizes multiple epitopes, they are termed as polyclonal antibodies. So, as we understand the difference between polyclonal and monoclonal antibodies, let us review their usage in biomedical research. So, monoclonal antibodies are widely used in biomedical research for several purposes such as ELISA, western blotting, immunofluorescence or chromatin immunoprecipitation. Other than that, in terms of medicine, they are used as therapeutics for cancer or autoimmune diseases. So, they are pretty important. Now, in this video, let's review how they are actually generated. So, first of all, you need to create your antigen of interest against which you want to create a monoclonal antibody and you would use an organism such as mouse or rabbit as a vehicle to make these things. So the antigen of interest first need to be generated using recombinant DNA technology and it can be injected in a mouse intraperitoneally. So immunizing these mouse would generate B cells in the spleen as it's a bloodborne antigen. So B cells against these antigen would be generated in the spleen. Then after some days, the B cells which are generated against that antigen is now extracted. Then they need to be cultured. But there is a fundamental problem in terms of culturing the B cells. B cells don't survive in a culture situation more than a week. Then we can initially get some amount of monoclonal antibodies from these B cells but the problem is we cannot get it for long. So what's the solution? What's the efficient solution? In order to solve this problem, we use hybridoma technology where we use two types of cells. First one is the antigen specific B cell extracted from the spleen of immunized organism. Now it would generate antibody, but it, it is not immortal. They are mortal cells. Now we fuse them with a myeloma cell, which are immortal actually they are cancer cell lines so while fuse them they would generate a hybridoma cell which has both the characteristics of these cell types that means they can generate antibody as well as they are immortal so the problem is solved right but there are nitty-gritty details of these procedure which we need to understand because when we are trying to add B cells Along with, the, along with the myeloma cells to generate hybridoma, there are quite a lot of cell types which would be present in these culture. And they include the activated, the antigen specific B cell in an unfused state, the myeloma cell in an unfused state, the fused B cells and the fused myeloma cell. And apart from all of these cell types, there would be hybridoma, which is our cell type of interest. So we need only hybridoma cell types and we need to get rid of others. Now let us review that how we can do that. So a selection procedure is required, right? And that is done by using HAT media. HAT media contains hypoxanthine, aminopterine and thymidine. Before understanding how HAT media works and how selection procedure works, we need to understand a very basic thing. That when any cell divide, it needs to replicate its DNA, right? And DNA replication requires a lot of nucleotides. So nucleotide biosynthesis is crucial for cells to divide as well. And inside a cell, the nucleotides can be generated using two pathways, de novo pathway and the salvage pathway. De novo pathway is basically using the or using all the ingredients in the cell to make nucleotides from scratch. But in this case, the aminopterin present in the hack media would block the de novo pathway by blocking a key enzyme in this process known as dihydrofolate reductase. Now, in absence of de novo pathway, salvage pathway is only way of generating these nucleotides. So in salvage pathway, 
activated ribose, base, etc. generates the nucleotide. So it is a way by which broken down uh, nucleotides can be utilized to generate further nucleotides. And it can be done with the help of hypoxanthine, thymidine and an enzyme known as HGPRT. This particular enzyme is present in the cells such as B cells but absent in myeloma cells. Simply HGPRT positive cells would survive because in them salvage pathway would occur but HGPRT minus cells would be dying because they don't have any ways of generating nucleotides. So they cannot divide ultimately they would die. So let us review the all cell types that would be generated after fusion. So there would be hybridoma cells, fused myeloma and B cells and unfused myeloma and B cells. Let us look at the HGPRT negative population myeloma cells and the fused myeloma cells. Both are HGPRT negative. So they would die eventually. Now we are left with hybridoma cells, antigen specific B cells and fused B cells, homogeneous fusion. How to get rid of these two cell types? So they are not immortal. So after some time, they would eventually die. And after a few weeks, we would left with hybridoma cells only. So after getting hybridoma cells, we need to screen for specificity of these antibodies. So these colonies of hybridoma cells are picked up and each clones would be cultured in a multiple plate. Now from this multiple plate, the fluids would be screened for the specificity of antibodies with the help of ELISA or many other ways such as Western blot or in, uh, immunofluorescence. So they would be checked for their specificity. After that, if you find two or three wells where specific monoclonal antibodies are generated, then these cells which are residing in these wells would be cultured in bulk in a big flask and that is how we are going to get a lot of uh, hybridoma cells which are of our interest or which are generating antibodies of our interest but imagine one thing that whenever you need a monoclonal antibody you quickly call the biotech company and they deliver the product in your doorstep but how do they produce these monoclonal antibodies in an industry setting? And producing monoclonal antibodies in an industrial setting needs specialized equipment such as bioreactors and many other procedures. I have a video on that which you can quickly watch by clicking on the link in the i button. So industrial settings are very different from a lab setting. Imagine a particular monoclonal antibody is required for your research and you need to order it from a biotech company and biotech company need to produce them in bulk in order of liters and they would give you a tiny quantity for your work but they are distributing globally so in order to know industrial setting click on the video on the description so i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and guys i'm also present in unacademy which is india's biggest learning platform if you want to learn from me use my code epi10 for 10 percent discount thank you guys